I'm Eris, welcome to 23, you're joining me for X-Files, episode 8. It's been several hours, but I'm still shaking. I can't stop seeing the dead body of Danny Bright, the coding prodigy and M.M. Wright employee who slit his own wrists in a locked server room. It appears Bright was the one behind Ashtag, a program designed to announce imminent deaths on the company's dating app, R8R. We still don't know how Bright's program knows who will die. Fulton believes the code is actually orchestrating the deaths. Now, I'm in M.M. Wright's conference room, trying to explain it all to E.D. Skinner. We've searched Bright's apartment, lots of notes and books all over, a mess of coding manuals, um, religious texts, and obscure occult stuff. We're sure his death was a suicide. Uh, there was a box cutter in one of his hands, and no one's been logged entering or exiting the room since he went inside a couple weeks ago. I saw a picture of his code. I'm no crow programmer, but it looks like nonsense. Then there's the blood. What do you make of the scene, Dexler? Bright etchings are meant to be magic, said Joel. The sort of thing that's charged by deep focus or mortal offering, like suicide. And the code. I recognized at least three ancient languages, plus Russian, Latin, and some encoded Chinese and Japanese characters. I get the sense that Bright used whichever language had the most direct meaning for the terms he needed, and built his own coding grammar. I think I see what you're getting at. I take it this is something beyond what anyone can decipher. Doc, it's got a local bureau tech and a couple Wright employees looking at it now. I hope they can make some headway. Hmm, what do you think this is, Dexler? The fantasies of a genius or something else? Well, he thought it was real. Whether this plan was successful in terms of the occult aspects, Bright believed it could work. Not really the sort of thing you can beta test, is it? Right. You can only kill yourself once, and he sure uh, was sure that the sacrifice was necessary. Is this how Fulton sees it? And we haven't had the chance to discuss it. I take it you're alone in the room? I am. Why? What's up? How are things going with the Pierce Institute? Anything to report? Pierce came here in person. Pierce himself partnered with Fulton, and which I don't think Fulton loved. No. I can't imagine he would. He tenses up any time Pierce is in the room. Pierce took a plane back east last night, right after the latest victim. Doing some research, Fulton said. That's really all I know. All right. That's that's all. I'll get back to you. I end the call, sit back in the chair, and think, what does Skinner expect Pierce's people to do? Or does he not know what to expect? There's a knock on the door, Fulton. I give him a thumbs up through the window, and he enters. Hey, figured I'd check in since, uh... Yeah, I guess we haven't caught up since last night. Was that Skinner? What did he won? Uh, he has me reporting on Piers. Remember when Skinner asked me to see me alone? He, uh, wants me to keep him fully informed on how Piers and his people operate. Well, inform away if you want, not that you're asking for my blessing. The relationship has improved. So, let's, uh, talk about Danny Bright and this everything. Hashtag, the code, the sigil, the suicide, his books, notes. I can see in Fulton's eyes that he's got ideas. I wonder how deep down the rabbit hole he went. Did he go into a weird trance like Philadelphia and come out with insights into an in suspect's mind? Your profiling method. What is it you do, like in Philly? I clear my mind. I recreate the room in my head. Recall everything I know about the suspect. I talk to them. Of course you do. The implied question within your question being, did I talk to the suspect in my head this time? Play as Fulton, invite Bright into your head. Hmm. What have you got? Well, did you? What did you find out? I didn't. There isn't all too much, is there? He was lonely, became bitter because of it. I keep thinking about Stephen Park, the last Ashtag Targon. 
People have such a hard time understanding his intellect that he'd built a coarse shell of vitriol and superiority around him for protection. Danny Bright felt like a victim of a cruel world. That's why he embarked on the project to let people delete their R8R profiles. Yeah, well, when they... But then he abandoned it. Presumably to develop Ashtag, which doesn't help students wanting to leave R8R at all. No, you're right. Something's happened. He snapped, and it became about revenge on ten people on his list. But they aren't all 8R, and they aren't all students. Ty writes on it, and do we have proof of all these people crossed him somehow? Good points. The authorities are gathering up remaining five to uh, put into protective custody. We can ask them, figure it out, but I'd be happier if we could just stop the program altogether. Hmm. Check his notes. There's gotta be something in all this writing that can tell us how to break the routine. Experts have been rushing through the pages. Code snippets, cult leaders, rantings, bad goth poetry, they haven't made sense of it. If this is what it looks like, and the evidence points to mysticism, we might not be able to stop it by traditional means at all. He might have been inspired by the occult, but that stuff's gotta be a theatrics, a big spiteful goodbye for everyone to see. In a locked room where no one would find him for weeks. Well, it's entirely possible that Bright believed his suicide was sacrifice, but what his program's doing can be done. For every day so far, there's got to be an explanation involving exploited smart systems. Traffic lights, pharmacy computers, elevators. Yes, it would take an impressive algorithm to, to time at all, but Bright was a brilliant coder, don't forget. Plausible, but hardly probable. Al just... AI just hasn't been advanced that far. The program would need a guiding hand. What? Like from a demon? Bright's malevolent ghost? Not every X-Fall is actually pro provably paranormal. But some are. I get that. But you can't just close yourself off to a possible explanation because I don't know. You'd rather it was something mundane. Well, we need a working theory. Emphasis on and a working theory. We have to eliminate the mundane and not jump right into... Okay, let me get this much from you. Even if Hashtag is powered by magic, it's it's most likely using smart tech. Bolton's been so dismissive of my point of the view, I'd rather not give him the satisfaction, but we have to find a common ground. I think that's plausible, yes. Bolton's frustration subsides, mine doesn't. He gets a text. That's the police. They've got all Hashtag's targets together, let's go. From the conference room to the parking garage, we don't say a word. What's the point? He's already set up a plan based on his theory. He's had the police round up the remaining five from Bright's list for us to watch over. Round-the-clock protection didn't help the last target, but it's all we've got. I recognize three of the five would be victims. Cecilia Lowe's a coder who worked with Bright to allow R8R users to delete their accounts and activity. Robert Alamides, the security admin for M.M. Wright. He was helping Doggett inspect the hashtag code. Not anymore. I half expected Alameda to become a suspect. While with his sexist attitude towards his ex, a curious choice for Bright to target. No, because he was a complete prick. And then there's an older man and a younger woman I don't recognize, both terrified, and uh, then arguing with his uh, assistant, Ty Wright himself. They've been told to relinquish all devices, phones, fitness trackers, anything on their person with a chip, except IDs and credit cards. Anything Ashtag could try to exploit. You can't take my phone. You don't need it. Besides, I'm going to be fine. I don't even have an R8A account. I give it to her. And don't argue. Hand it over. You don't have the authority to tell me what to do. I'm not being held on any charges. Tyler, don't be an idiot. Judging from her stern face and Wright's sheepish reaction, Tyler is coat. She reserves when she he's truly being difficult. Like a pouting child, Ty shoves the phone into his assistant's hands. Wright's comment about having R8R account doesn't, doesn't make me curious. 
I look to the unfamiliar woman. At least four of you aren't stand for students. Miss, are you one? I am, yeah. And I'm supposed to be his machine learning class. And... but I guess there isn't one now. What's the older man explaining his connection to some extent. I notice Fulton looking in alarm at his phone. You may not have an R8R R8, R8, account, Mr. Wright, but Campus PD says you do now. You're two employees, too, and the professor. What? What the hell? Wright snatches his phone from his assistant, speed tap, searching desperately until he sees it. Could someone explain what's going on? The cops insisted I come here with them. Taking... You're taking our phones. Is this all about hashtags? We're just being cautious. All we can say is that at this point, you could be in danger. We're keeping you safe. It's Danny Bright. He wrote some demonic program designed to find us and murder us, and then he offed himself. You're all on his list. It's all right, everyone. We're not going to let that happen. Right. You need to stay quiet. But first, how do you hear about the list from Alameda? It was for me. I was angry. I wanted him to know that what was going on in his poorly run company. And where did you get that information? Troubled, Cecilia looks down. She doesn't want to say it. I told her. I'm sorry. Well, that's great. Who else did you tell? Well, just Cecilia, and I, I... I... How could I not tell her she was a target? Hmm, interesting. My phone buzzes. It's a video call from Doggett. I step away from the others for privacy. What have you got? Our texts tell me that there's no way to stop it. They're saying the code's disrupted hundreds across... across hundreds of computers. Likely, without the owner's knowledge, it's connected to virtual private networks, so the fragment can't be traced. It's read-only from the laptop. They say there's a way to back in, but it prompts for a series of commands. Uh, do they think they can break through? Doesn't all look good. But they won't give up trying. Thought you'd want to know before you go into the hiding. I also hear uh, they're working on an injunction to shut down R8R, but evidence is sketchy. I wouldn't hold my breath. If that would have even stopped the coat from fulfilling its purpose. I hear you. Worth a shot, though. Good luck to you and Fulton. Stay safe. Thanks for the sit rep. Whatever. Get it. You stay safe, too. Same to you, John. Dog it reacts to my sentiment with a surprise chuckle. He pauses, looking off into the others in the server room. Better go. Talk to you soon, Jess. And with that, Dog it ends the call. Fulton and I hand over our phones to the police for safekeeping with the other's devices. Fulton reasons that, while we aren't targets, our devices could be used to listen in and track them. Sounds far-fetched, but I give in. We haul hop into a windowless prison or transport and depart. No cameras can see inside. The comms are silent. Nothing can track where we are. You have comms in the car. Okay, you're an idiot. On the drive, we discuss why these five were chosen from Danny Bright's list. The professor, Dr. Richard Baines, has a tumultuous relationship with Bright. The student, Meredith Hall, turned him down for a date once. Cecilia was asked out and rejected him. She's ashamed to admit she laughed at him because of his age. I don't have to ask why Bright was targeted or saved for last. Alameda says he doesn't know why Bright's after him from beyond the grave. We arrive at a San Francisco Police Department station house, and the transport backs up to a rare entrance under a brick archway. Look at all the electronics inside! All security cams have been shut off and the staff cleared. We enter the station. We navigate the halls to secure evidence room built to survive anything short of a bomb blast. We hand over our guns for safety. What? What are the? What are the guns have intellect in them too? I mean, seriously. We've brought in chairs, snacks, water. But quarters are fairly tight. I could easily see people going stir crazy in there. A click buzz sound comes over the intercom, followed by a voice. This is the front desk. The hall's blocked off and the cameras are down, so you can get to the toilets, okay? Everything good in there? Anyone need anything? If you want something, now's your chance. Hey, I could use a cushion for my chair. Back problems. I'm sure we can get that, Doctor. Anyone else? No? Heard that? I'll uh, make sure to get it. 
There's a key on the table that goes to the lockdown switch. Turn it uh, in the lock by the door. No one can get in or out. All right, thank you. I grab the key and pocket it. No need to risk in someone else snatching it. It's quiet at first, but with nothing to do, no phones to check, everyone starts to go chatty. Dr. Baines sits alone, quietly stewing. It's hard to think of anything other than the situation we're in, so that's where everyone speculates on. Wright keeps blaming Bright for being a cuck, when ch then chuckling about it. Then Dr. Baines stands fuming and looks at Wright. You and your damn social media, this is your fault. No, I don't think so, Gramps. Social media existed a long-ass time before I came along. Mr. Baines steps closer, confronting Wright directly. The others remain still, watching the argument unfold. Yes, it did, but you decided it wasn't enough of his cesspool. You had to cobble the far worst parts together like a Dr. Frankenstein. R8R is an individual freedom, and taking responsibility for yourself, they chose to participate. Amazing. You talk of personal responsibility, and yet you accept none. There are any doubt of others' faces now. There's no telling how far this will escalate. Let's calm down. Guys, we're here to... gonna be here for a while. Take a deep breath and cool off. Being agitated won't help you or rest of us. You can't tell me he isn't the reason we're all here in fear of our lives. I'm not gonna get into it with you. Take a seat, please, both of you. You diffuse the tension between Wright and Dr. Baines. They don't want to listen to me, but they do. I take a breath. Why is this happening to me? I just didn't want to date him. There's nothing to worry about, Melanie. Our people will stop this program, or it'll run its course, and you'll be free to go. Hmm, if I might be, uh, speak. Young Mr. Bright took my machine learning class. He was beyond exceptional. If he wrote code that crooks for past iterations, he will only keep trying harder until it succeeds. It has to be force stopped. The sun buzzes from the intercom and the thunks of steel bolts locking into place at the door. We're locked in. Everyone but me and Fulton panics. Everyone, relax. We'll find out what's going on. Hello, I is everyone all right in there? Yes. We're good. Can you tell us what's going on? I'm not really sure. I can't get the security system to respond. It knows. How could it know? I made a deal with the devil. He sacrificed himself. There's nowhere to hide. It can't get to us in here, though, right, can it? This is why you should have taken him to an old-fashioned bomb shelter with no actual electronics whatsoever. What's it gonna do? Drive electronics through the floors and the, of the forest? Officer, this is Agent Fulton. By any chance, have you been listening in? Hello? I mean, yes, but only to monitor the situation in case something happened. You're an idiot. Is the intercom connected to your security system? I... I don't know. Uh, pretty much everything runs through our computers. And that's how it knows. It listened for us. It can't get us in here, though, can it? No, but the lack of oxygen will. Okay, um, there's a problem. Another one. Ventilations in the defense protocols. It's designed to protect from gas leaks or bio... Terrorism. There's no air, new air coming in. The room's still tight. Damn it! Where's it? I don't have to ask what that means. Without fresh air, a timer has begun. It ends when we die from carbon monoxide or dioxide poisoning. We have to contact Doggett. I need you to reach out to Do John Doggett. You should have his number. Tell him what's happening, and also ask if the if there's an update on Ashtag. He'll know what that means. You got it. Hashtag targets are understandably anxious. So am I. Dr. Bane starts to shake and pace. Oh god, oh god. We're going to die in here. What have you people done to us? Listen, dog. I need you to sit down before I knock you out and it'll consume oxygen less. Dr. Baines has grabbed my arm. He's in my face, desperate, frightened, and angry. Don't panic. Dr. Baines, Richard. It's very important that we keep our heart rates down and breathe easy. How the hell am I supposed to breathe easy inside this death trap? Dr. Baines has me with both hands. When he jerks back hard, letting go, Fulton's wrapped his arms around him from behind. No! Don't! Calm down. Calm down. Calm down. 
He and Fulton de-escalated Dr. Baines. It takes several seconds for Dr. Baines to stop struggling and Fulton to let him go. It's important what I said. The healthier and faster our breath, the more CO2 we make. I know this is frightening for everyone, but it's important to remain calm. Mm. The first thing Fulton and I do is check the ventilation shaft. We figure maybe we can escape or at least get some outside air in. The shaft is just a large enough for me to fit, but the sheet metal's riddled with protruding nails. We have nothing to pound them out with. I'm getting a headache already, as are the others. Not a good sign. The desk officer says they're getting approval to cut through the door with a torch, but that means it will take time, too. Also figuring uh, that never works. Yeah, the heat causes increased in CO2, and increased heat and CO2 means you burn through oxygen faster while they're torching it. <sighs> he also tells us that their IT staff can't figure out how to unlock the security system. Even rebooting doesn't work. Finally, he says the doggets got back to him and told us to hang tight. No news on ending Bright's program yet. Wright sits alone, head down, consumed by turbulent thoughts. I'd say... I'd like to say he's reflecting on having created R8R, but it seems like more than likely he's uh, cursing the day he ever hired Danny Bright. Across the room, Melanie praised herself. While Cecilia and Alamina face each other, holding hands, sharing desperate, loving gazes. It's a strange sight at first, but then I recall Alameda telling Cecilia about Bright's work, and the number one boyfriend coffee mug on the Alameda's desk, the one he looked at forlornly before calling his ex a bitch. Alameda, Cecilia is your ex-girlfriend, the one you mentioned when I interviewed you? I was just telling her, if I have to go, I'm glad I'll be with her. Right, without an audible groan of their derision, I ignore it. Cecilia, were you two dating when Bright asked you out? No, we'd broken up. That's why he asked me out. Berto, why did Bright put you on the list? Alameda sighs. He doesn't want to say. I... Someone told me he asked you out. I told him to stay away from you. Babe, you can't do that. We were broken up. I know, and I was broken up over it. I didn't want that spaz going after you. Ah, uh, Miss Lowe turns Bright down. Mr. Alameda threatens him. Bright leaves the project he was working on with Miss Lowe. And he starts working on Ashtag, because he'd have enough being picked on, rejected, pushed around. Are you saying it's our fault? I wouldn't put it that way. It wasn't any thing that shaped his mindset, but he chose ten things to focus on. Ten people he felt were exceedingly cruel to him. Then ten people he wanted to die for what he'd done, or they'd done. They may even be the in chronological order. Five students, Dr. Baines, then Meredith, then three from work with Mr. Wright last. My head, it really hurts bad. Mine too. Let's try not to talk too much. Keep it calm. Hold on, right. How exactly did you end up on Bright's list? What did you do to piss him off? Well, he was just jealous of my work that I accomplished. I hated so many like you in my classes. Danny Bright, Stephen Park. You project your insecurities on everyone else. But Bright was one of a kind. He could back up his claims of greatness with flawless creative algorithms. Accusatory tone from Dr. Baines this time. Everyone's subdued, it's quiet for a long moment, and then... Wright came to see me a few weeks ago. He was, I don't know, depressed. Said he's fallen into an abyss, whatever that means. Went out of his contract, I wouldn't let him go. It sounds like a cry for help. If you suspected he was suicidal, you should have gone to Human Resources about it. But I didn't. I thought he was just trying to weasel out of his contract. You are remarkably thick, right? It's a wonder you aren't dead already. Okay, well, let's not start this again. In spite of his wooziness, Dr. Bain straightens up and sweeps his gaze around the room. What if Wright is last on the list? The Aztec pro program should complete once his death is confirmed. If he were to die now, we might all be safely released. 
The others look to Riot, realizing what Dr. Baines is suggesting. Riot sees it too. Whoa, what the hell? Y you don't know that's how it works. On the contrary, I know how Danny Bright structured his work. It makes sense to me. You die, we live. Celia stands up, followed by Alameda. Wright stands and backs away. Would you all please sit back down? I'm reviewed Bright's work. He wasn't a perfect decoder as you think. He often didn't have fail safes in place for certain conditions. I may be last, but if you're next, if you die before Ashtag calls you out, I bet the loop breaks. No one knows which of them to believe. No one dies. We're going to get out of here. And out of this. And we'll do it without killing anyone so drop in. Wright sits in a huff. Dr. Baines folds his arms. The other three slowly sit back down in shame. And with that, let's cut the chatter. We have to limit our carbon dioxide levels for as long as we can. We don't know how long we... Fulton stops as Andrew hums to life. Everyone, I have news for, your, uh, for you from John Doggett. Hashtag has posted seven names with hashtag. Hashtag. It's everyone in the room. Seven. But we're not in the program's list. Doggett said you were at it seconds before the postings. Sorry, I have better news. Still trying to get you out. We have less than an hour left. Before that, irreversible organ damage is possible. Tears start to fall along those we brought here to protect. It's hard not to cry myself, but I'm too worn out to. I don't get it, though. Could Danny have written an algorithm that good that it can add people after the fact? I wouldn't think so, but then it's hard to imagine one could do anything or everything that is accomplished to date. Fulton instructs everyone to lie down, control their breathing. That's the last anyone says for a while. All we hear is a distant fizz of a torch cutting metal. They won't give up, even though there's no way they'll get us out in time. There's no clock, but Dr. Baines has placed his watch on a table for anyone to get up and look at. I avoid it. I think about the people who have wronged me in my life. I think about my hometown, my family. I could never be this vengeful. Bolton gets up to check the watch and lies back down next to me. He quietly asks how I'm feeling. Conserve air, remember? Yeah, well, I wanted to thank you for telling me about your talk with Skinner. I know you didn't have to. If I were Skinner, I wouldn't simply trust Pierce guys either. I need to know what was happening with my team. Fulton turns his head to face me. He looks serious. There's something I need to say to you, Dexler. Yeah, what's that, Fulton? There's something between your teeth. I wanted to tell you for hours, but it's never felt like the right time. Fulton starts to chuckle, and so do I. Our subdued laughter quickly turns to coughing. Well, that probably shaved a couple minutes off our lifespans. Fulton smiles and goes back to staring at the ceiling. I don't. As much as I don't want to, I think about the possibly being the end. And I'm wondering if there's something I might want to say to him. I heard from Magic Bullets. Someone contacted me. Claims to have created Magic Bullets. Said if I told anyone, he'd know. Fulton turns back to me, truly stunned by my confession. He opens his mouth to speak, unsure what to say. When he's interrupted by a loud thunk, followed by a rushing hiss. I turn to the door. It's open. Paramedics rush into the room. I manage to pick myself up off the floor. An oxygen mask is pressed against my face, and I breathe in. It's life itself. The others have uh, are being similarly tended to. I have questions, but no one hears me through the mask. For now, it's enough being alive. Night's rest at the hospital normalizes my breathing. They say CO2 doesn't seem to have damaged any of my organs. More tests will be needed. I hope every single case doesn't end with me in a hospital. This makes two for two, not a great start to my career. I'm still groggy. When I'm released, I find I have a text from Fulton. He's already taken a plane to D.C. I check on the others. Fortunately, medical personnel don't suspect any permanent damage, but they're being kept for observation. Doggett texts to tell me he's doing paperwork in the hotel room and that I should meet him later at the hotel bar. We find a quiet spot to talk before I even or order an iced tea. I'm already asking questions. Can you tell me what the hell happened? How did you stop the program? First things first, how are you feeling? 
<sighs> pretty tired. They say it's uh, gonna be a few days before I'm 100%. I could sleep for weeks. I wouldn't do that, but I uh, wouldn't push myself either. Don't go to the gym or anything for a bit. Take some time off. Doggett gives me a tight, warm smile. He takes a sip of a beer. Okay, here we are. What the hell? Etc. 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 The text called it a desperate failsafe, a series of three codes of Bright's choosing Daner in case he uh, had to stop Ashtag. They keyed in the codes. Program obliterated itself. No traces of it anywhere. No way to know how it really worked. How did they figure out the code? Was it you? Doggett finishes beer with a large swig and signals for another. It was Pierce. He consulted with his chief researcher, came back to us with the exact codes and sequence we needed. Hard to believe. Come on, I don't see how they could possibly have figured that out. Yeah, I wish I had something more enlightening to tell you. The best I've got. Hmm, Doggett mentioned Pierce's mysterious chief researcher. Best I've got. Sometimes Pierce gets exactly what we uh, need to solve a case or stop a tragedy. I don't know how he does it. Wish I did. That's good enough for you? You just accept that. You're Pierce's right-hand man, and we should just let you in on his methods. Or he should. Right, Pierce has always been one hell of an investigator. As an agent, he only ever left one case unsolved. One. I kind of have to accept that some connections he makes I'll never understand. Doggett gets a second beer, and we shift optics. I tell him about my first official case, which it turns out he has already read up on. We share tales of our time in the military. His are way more intense, though he never had to fight a mucus man. He tells me about being a cop, how the death of a son and his subsequent divorce led him to joining the FBI. Doggett lived a hell of a life, or a lot of lives in his time. He carries it all, not with nostalgia or regret, but certitude. Well, I think it's time to head back and get ready to get out of here tomorrow. Doggett stands. I can tell he won't be talking or talk to into staying the chat while, while longer. I stand as well. Thank you, and good night. It's been a pleasure to work with you again. Offer a handshake, and he accepts it with an amused smirk. Pleasure's been all mine, Agent Dexler. You turned out all right. John Doggett smiles warmly before he turns and heads for the elevator. As soon as he's gone, it starts to hit me how exhausted I am. I order some chicken fingers to go. And my phone alarm wakes me up the next morning, and the mini-fridge chicken becomes my breakfast as I rush to pack for my flight. The next couple days involve a lot of sleeping. Caitlin drops by every evening to make sure I've eaten. After the weekend's ended and I've had all the rest I can stomach, I head to work. Bolton's already there when I arrive. He's on his computer, deep into what I assume is paperwork, so I don't disturb him. Once I'm settled in, Fulton rolls away from his desk and clears his throat. I slept way more than I expected to. You? Same, pretty much. Oh, sorry I ducked out on you. I wanted to get my ass back here and uh, have a talk with Pierce as soon as possible. What did he have to say? He claims that he and his chief researcher went over the photos of Danny Bright's apartment to figure out the failsafe sequence. Tell me about the researcher. Don't I mention the chief researcher, too? What's the story there? All Pierce has to told me is that he's indispensable. As far as I know, no one's ever met him. I won't complain, because we're not dead. But something's not right. I don't know how much Pierce is hiding or what his plans are. I need you to tell me about the Magic Bullock's contact, too. I'll fill you in, sure. More and more, I'm getting the sense that we're being surrounded by wolves. We need to have each other's backs. Any secrets to share? I've been candid with you. Anything you have to tell me? No, there's nothing. We get into all of it. My being asked to report on Pierce to Skinner, the bizarre call from Hey Guys, which, Hey Guys, you guys get it? I, hey Guys, what's up? What it all means and who we can trust. It's a long conversation and a short list. We're friendly. Yay. Without further ado, thank you all for watching. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Head down the description below links to social media, Discord. If you like to support me and my content, very much appreciate it if you hit that like and make sure to subscribe. You know, it's it's awesome. You get to join uh, Locums Locos, become part of a community. It's incredibly awesome. Please do. Without further ado, peace out.